Hello and welcome to Frankie's Cultural Observations. Today I'm spilling the tea on Starbucks drinkers. Starbucks drinkers come in all different shapes and sizes. Tall, venti and intermittent fasting yoga moms with narcissistic personality disorder. Starbucks is a middle class lifestyle brand. A place where self-proclaimed white wine influencers go after their morning spin class. Starbucks is also a pyramid scheme where individuality gets dehydrated and sucked off through an eco-friendly cookie straw. Somehow, Starbucks has managed to convince millions of similar people living similar lives that buying an iced Americano on your lunch break makes you a trendsetter. Starbucks drinkers represent the death of the social. They've mastered the modern art of not caring about anyone other than themselves. When two Starbucks drinkers meet up for a coffee and a catch-up, they struggle to bond because when you get in a conversation with a Starbucks drinker, their manic levels of self-promotion makes them think that they'll never be able to talk about themselves ever again, which is why they've been ranting at you for the last five minutes about their meaningless existence without stopping to take a breath or giving you a chance to walk away because you, like the Starbucks drinkers, also don't care about other people. When two Starbucks drinkers engage in the combat of face-to-face -face conversation, scientists believe it's like putting two AI computers in the same room and watching them talk it out until one of them malfunctions from a coding error. Starbucks acts as a buffer between the uneventful work and home cubicles of the basic Irish human. Starbucks is a waiting room full of people who think it's their turn to be the main character in a show about their lives. They're even writing their own show as we speak. But if we look closer, we'll see the Starbucks drinker isn't actually writing a show. They're really just scrolling through adverts.ie looking for a real job that they'll inevitably get fired from because their drive towards nihilism allows them to justify why it's okay to sit around Starbucks all day pretending to type so people will think they're a tortured novelist. But if they were truly a tortured novelist, they'd be drinking instant coffee and dying a slow death of pneumonia due to the damp in the drywall of an abandoned warehouse that they're squatting in, like a real artist. The proliferation of Starbucks in the modern landscape has pimped out the concept of public spaces, making them caffeinated wonderlands where the cost of admission is the price of a caramel latte, a coconut flat white, or a complaint about the cost of living in a 300 euro trench coat. Okay, is that a trench coat? Oh no, it's not, fuck. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm Frankie, and today I've spilled the tea on Starbucks drinkers.